Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back again. So, in our past uh, lecture, we have discussed uh, the idea of consumer surplus and producer surplus, right? And we told that by that consumer surplus and producer surplus, we are trying to capture that how much extra valuation consumer one consumer is gaining, and exactly the same way how much extra valuation one producer is gaining, right? And this extra valuation we are telling that. Uh, welfare of the uh, consumers, welfare of the producers correspondingly, right. So, if so, we have discussed those using some discrete commodities demand curve and supply curve, right. So, let me just uh, quickly remind you that what was there. Say, suppose this side we are measuring quantity demanded, quantity supplied, both price is this side, right, and suppose uh, red color is our uh, market supply curve. like that our sub market supply curve right. So, this is definitely one unit, this is second unit, this is third unit, this is fourth unit and so on. Okay. Like that okay. and exactly in the same way if we have the demand curve okay. say suppose this side price we are measuring as usual. Suppose, the demand curve is the say blue color right say suppose like that. So, we understand that at this particular point demand curve and supply curve is matching that will determine the exactly the equilibrium price p star o p star will be the equilibrium price and at that price 4 number of cars will be transacted in the market. Okay. And what is the consumer surplus? Consumers, consumers as a group S u consumers as a group consumers surplus this area we know. this area is the consumer surplus okay. and exactly the same way producer surplus will be this green bordered area. This area. So, nonetheless uh, the entire society whom we are talking about the members of the society who are participating in this market as both consumer and producer. So, some of these two surpluses this overall area whatever we are generating right this entirely red color border thing this we can together tell that that is the societal surplus social. So, top thing is the consumer surplus. Okay this bottom thing is the basically producer surplus, producers as a group consumer surplus, producer surplus right. So, if you clap them together or add them together it is basically total societal surplus because consumer producer both are say member of the same society right same economy from uh, they are coming from. Right. So, that is the total social surplus. Now, the question is sir if this is the discrete goods case then why we always discuss this kind of continuous kind of demand curve and continuous kind of supply curve we, we always take right. See the idea is even if you have a discrete group right this horizontal axis suppose I measure this is my first unit or this is the distance is the one unit this distance is the another one unit and so on right. But we have the right to choose our scale right. So, suppose this is my one unit. So, then this is the second unit, then this is the third unit and so on. So, in that case demand curve will be what this up to this like that right. 
So, in that way, so as you can squeeze the scale of the horizontal axis, right, price though that is the monetary unit, in any case that is continuous, but the quantity, the axis where you are measuring quantity, if you can squeeze the scale of that quantity, right. In the limiting case, you will get the, the, this kind of broken kind of this kind of this kind of demand curve, it will be downward sloping only, but that kind of broken line like that, right. Like in computer graphics, no, if you see that there is a straight line, right. If you zoom out that, zoom out or zoom in, if you expand basically, I think expansion is called zoom in, okay. So, if you expand that, you will see that after a it is this kind of line you are getting, right. So, we are if we think of the reverse order, you are starting from this way and you are squeezing this scale, okay. So, you are basically uh, squeezing this one scale means what you are you are you are uh, you are you are contracting the diagram. So, what will you are landing here, right? The limiting case as if it will show that this kind of demand curve is there. Okay. So, that is why this kind of continuous demand curve what we have started with or continuous supply curve what we have started with last uh, 5, 6 chapters what we have discussed that is enough, that is enough. But this kind of discrete good example, their corresponding demand curve, their corresponding supply curve will help us to understand the concept of consumer surplus, producer surplus and all, right. That surplus is basically difference between what is my as a consumer, what is my willingness to pay and what I am actually paying by virtue of the market price or market is allowing me to pay and still to get that product, ok. So, that gap is and since why as a consumer who is the first consumer in this diagram, this is the surplus right, why this area because that consumer is participating only one car, we have assumed that everybody is participating one car. So, that is why this much extra valuation he is getting and that into the number of cars he is getting, ok. So, that area is by him. This is second person why and this much extra valuation he is generating extra valuation on the sense of what extra valuation in the price sense. This is his willingness to pay, but he is paying this much, ok. So, that, that gap. Okay, my willingness to pay for a pen is say 15 rupee in the market, but when I am going the same pen I am getting at 10 rupee. So, how much surplus I am getting? I am generating surplus of the rupees 5 if I purchase one pen. If I purchase two pen perhaps my surplus is 5 rupees 5 per pen, right. So, 5 into 2. So, rupees 10 is the surplus. Okay. So, here we are trying to capture social welfare. Okay, or measure of welfare in terms of monetary unit, right? Social welfare in terms of money. Okay, that we are trying to capture by uh, through introducing this kind of two concepts: consumer surplus, producer surplus. Okay, and those are nothing but the extra valuation consumers are enjoying for consumer surplus. Exactly the same way, extra valuation producers enjoying for producer surplus. Let me repeat or let me remind you again extra valuation in which sense the for the consumer side the valuation or the amount of money what or an amount of price what I am willing to pay minus what I am actually paying because market is allowing to get that product by paying only that much. So, that is my extra valuation that I am generating. So, that is my additional welfare gain by participating in the market exactly same way from the producer side, what market price or at what price producer is selling that product in this particular case at that P star price producer is selling the product, but first producer his cost of production only this much because he is uh, able to sell that product or deliver that product one unit no until that so at that price only. Okay. So, in between what is the gap? So, this area will be the first producer's surplus, first producer surplus, single producer his surplus, his or her of course, how much amount of surplus welfare or surplus by extra valuation he is generating by participating in the market, ok. So, in that way if we if we if we proceed right with a, our familiar continuous demand curve, continuous supply curve right. So, 
suppose this is we are measuring quantity demanded here, quantity supplied here, price in the vertical axis right and suppose this is our demand curve, this is our supply curve right. So, we can tell if this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve right. So, we know that this will be the equilibrium price at which every unit of that product will be transacted and this much quantity will be transacted in the market. So, O p star will be the equilibrium price at which every unit of that product will be transacted in the market and O q star is the amount or quantity of that product which will be transacted in the market right. So, definitely suppose E is our equilibrium point and this is A point and suppose this is B point. So, we can tell A p star E that triangular area is the total consumers as a group their surplus exactly the same way that triangular area B p star E that is producers as a group producers surplus ok. So, definitely this is the total welfare or total societal surplus right ok. So, total societal surplus ok. Now, if you club these two together consumer surplus and producer surplus. So, basically we are getting this A E B kind of triangular area is the total amount of extra valuation which is generated within the society. Now, let us go back to the question what we have started with this chapter. Question is that yes market is a good way to allocate resources right. Now, whether that is a desirable way from the societal point of view or not that is what our question and that we are searching in this discussion right through this discussion right. So, look at here now suppose so this kind of equilibrium E will be the equilibrium O p star will be the equilibrium price O q star will be the equilibrium quantity those things will be generated in this market provided that this market is allowed to operate freely right. Now, suppose government or that monetary authority or whoever is the authority of that society that that particular economy they want to intervene in this market ok. So, we will see that if government intervene into this market whether societal welfare before government intervention what is that and after government intervention what is that. If we compare and we can see that before government intervention whatever societal welfare is there that is the highest amount vis a vis any other societal welfare that could be generated through some or other way of government intervention we can tell that free market the way free market allocate resources that is not not only the good way that is the perhaps the desirable way from the societal point of view right. So, let us see that thing. So, so in this market transaction ok after the consumers as a group and producers as a group after they participate in the free market transaction they generate some amount of social welfare in this market in this society and that social welfare amount is captured by this triangular area in some monetary units we are measuring price in the vertical axis right it is in some monetary units quantity in the horizontal axis right. So, price into quantity if you a, a, take that area right. So, it is some amount of money basically that much of money right. So, this social welfare or societal surplus and its two component consumer surplus and producer surplus all of these are basically trying to capture welfare in terms of money ok quantifying welfare, welfare is a qualitative kind of thing no when we refer welfare societal welfare ok it is a it is a uh, some level of uh, satisfaction or extra satisfaction people are generating or something like that right welfare. Welfare is not money if I give you say 100 rupee it is not necessarily that your welfare will increase right you 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 may you may say suppose I am giving you 100 rupee ok and you are you are smoking with that 100 rupee. So, what will happen through that smoking consumption you are getting some utility some satisfaction right, but through that 
uh, you are creating some health hazard to you. You are creating some health externality as health hazard to other people that is the different question. Okay. Entire society when we will calculate those people's health hazard also will come into the picture. But at least if I consider for your case, your health is getting deteriorated. So, we do not know with this 100 rupee uh, cigarette consumption whether your ultimate uh, welfare increased or fall actually. Okay. Your satisfaction level through that consumption has increased, your health is getting deteriorated as a result your way of life is getting uh, retarded, right? it is it's a compromised kind of thing. Okay the kind of living you were enjoying before this uh, health negative health uh, effect and after this it is it is deteriorated right so we don't know so just money is not welfare okay but here what we are trying we are trying to that qualitative kind of concept welfare try to quantify that in terms of money that we are trying here right now look at here let us take uh, one new diagram to understand if government can intervene into this market and improve that thing or improve the total amount of social welfare. Okay. If government can improve that, then you will tell that market is not a desirable outcome. right? Okay, let us see. So, suppose this is the thing, okay. quantity we are measuring horizontal axis, quantity demanded, quantity supplied both, price we are measuring in the vertical axis. Suppose this is the demand curve, this is the supply curve, say A B is the demand curve, suppose C D is the supply curve and E is the equilibrium definitely if you allow that market to operate freely. Okay. And this will be the equilibrium price O P star and this will be the equilibrium quantity O Q star okay, that we know. Now, suppose government is intervening into this market. Okay how government can intervene? Government can intervene in quantity side, in price di dimension also. Last chapter or two, three lectures ahead, lectures we have discussed, the government can intervene, how the different ways government can intervene this side. Two ways, one by imposing some lower or upper limit of the price or by imposing through some tax, right, that we have discussed. So, that we are coming. Quantity restriction, suppose rationing we have discussed, suppose government is telling that no, 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 we will not allow more than this quantity of uh, that commodity uh, to be transacted in this market. Suppose government is putting some rationing kind of restriction because this commodity is very precious, we have to import this is suppose the petroleum product we have to import from middle east country and there is that uh, political tension is middle middle east countries okay uh, that opec members some of the opec members there is a political tension and we are not sure that tomorrow whether we will be able to import okay because its uncertainty is looming large around that country right so we are not sure so that is why we are trying to a little bit uh, trying to read consumption a little bit less so that we can even if we, we will not be able to import the product uh, tomorrow from that country at least we, we can manage with this saving that is the target right so if government impose that kind of restriction what will happen look if this is the government is not allowing more than this quantity will be transacted how much total quantity will be transacted in that market only that much, that much only. Okay. And what will be the total social, social welfare in that way? Look, so in any case that is the price level, right? equilibrium price okay. and that equilibrium price every seller and every uh, buyers are uh, transacting that product per unit at that price. Okay. So, what will happen? Okay. So, until that quantity the seller buyers who have the demand curves portion or who are, whose willingness to pay above this price, right? They can only be can be able to participate, right? Because this side, na, this side people they are they are also willing to participate, okay? But government is not allowing them to participate uh, to purchase the product from the market. You can ask the thing sir, how government will distinguish, whose government is not distinguishing, 
whose valuation is more and whose valuation is less. Government is cutting only that beyond that nobody will be allowed. Okay. So, definitely people if say suppose this people can get that product right. Suppose this distance and this distance are same in a sense that the number of people lying within this and same number of people lying within this. Okay. Now, suppose if these people get that product, how much valuation consumers can generate? Definitely consumers as a group can generate this much total valuation, because those people who are lying in between Q 1 and Q star, in between Q 1 and Q star, okay, their maximum willingness to pay is captured by this segment of the demand curve and they are paying this price only. So, definitely this will be the societal surplus generated by them. Okay. Alternatively, for somehow if we can manage that these people could participate in the market at the same price, how much total societal surplus can generate within that society? Because those people's maximum willingness to pay is captured by this segment of the demand curve, but they also are paying the same price. right? So, definitely this trapezoid area will be the total societal surplus or consumer surplus as a group. right? So, definitely that society will get more surplus okay, if these people can participate after the price mechanism or after this kind of not price mechanism rather this kind of rationing, rationing principle imposed by the government. right? So, that is why we, we told sometimes back that these people are more efficient than these people. Efficient in the sense that people customers from the customers side who value the product more, they are more efficient customers. Okay. So, in that way for some re mechanism, right? so these people these efficient people can be participate in the market and in that through and exactly the same way if you force these people right these people or sellers say suppose sellers who are lying within this segment right if you allow them to participate in the market right so their willingness to or ability to supply that product at what cost or at what price that is captured by this segment of the supply curve so they can generate this green colored border this could be the total amount of seller surplus or producer surplus they can generate. Alternatively, same number of sellers if you allow these people to participate, okay, how much total surplus they can generate? Because their cost of production okay, is captured by this segment of the this segment of the supply curve, this is the supply curve, right? This is the supply curve, this is the demand curve. Okay. Ah, this D is not demand curve, this is C D is the supply curve in that way, okay. do not be confused. Okay. So, then they could generate otherwise only this segment, this much only the societal surplus, uh, producer surplus they can generate. So, definitely this sellers who are here, they are more efficient than sellers who are here, because this sellers could able to produce the product at the lowest possible cost. Okay. So, if government allow that only until this much to be transacted, right? If the efficient group of sellers and efficient group, group of customers participate in the market, right? What will happen? Total surplus, what will be generated in the society is bounded by this red line, this, 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 this kind of trapezoid line, this, this, this kind of trapezoid line. Okay. We will compare that vis a vis if government do not do not intervene into the market through this kind of rationing mechanism, what could be the social surplus? In that case, this could be also a part of that social surplus. We know that this could be the total surplus, right? So, by this rationing mechanism, actually, if that rationing mechanism is implemented, social surplus will go down okay, by this triangular area. Okay, and this mass social surplus will be generated within that society. Now, the question is if somehow market fails okay, 
to allocate the resources to the most efficient customers and most efficient uh, sellers, right? What will happen? Social surplus can go down even from this trapezoid area to that small triangular area, okay? And that time loss will be this bigger trapezoid area, right? Depending on whom. So, in usually, no, when what real life what will happen? No, when this kind of rationing mechanism will be implemented there, right? Because you will see that whatever demand, demand until this, until OQ star, that much of demand is there in the market, right? So, since demand is more than the allowed to be transacted, right? Some or other mechanism will come into the picture. Either customers will bargain among themselves to raise the price or sellers, right? They will try to increase the price because they know that number of at the equilibrium price, okay, number of customers, how many are there in the market, actually all of them are not going to get the product. So, even if we increase the price little bit, right, larger valuation or high, higher valuation customers, they will be able to pay and they will accept that price. Okay. So, in that way some mechanism will come into the picture, so that at the end of the day product will go to the those customers who have the higher, higher value, relatively higher valuation. Okay. But that is not the target here, our target is to show here if government participate in the market, how or uh, intervene into the market, uh, whether government can increase the social welfare uh, vis a vis what could be the otherwise generated by the free market. Okay. So, obviously, uh, if this is the quantity demanded, quantity supplied, the price in the vertical axis, okay, this is the demand curve, okay, this is the supply curve, okay, supply curve. Okay. So, this will be the E is the equilibrium price, uh, E is the equilibrium point, this will be the equilibrium quantity, this will be the equilibrium price. Uh, this O O Q star will be the equilibrium quantity, O P star will be the equilibrium price and we know that suppose this is A point and this is say uh, B point. So, triangular area A B E that will be the social surplus. Okay? And we told that if government intervene into the market through this kind of rationing quantity, social surplus will be cut down by this amount, it will be reduced by this amount. Right. So, social, social surplus is going to get reduced only. Okay. Now, suppose the opposite situation, suppose government is forcing to this society to transact beyond the quantity equilibrium quantity, quantity demanded this side, quantity supplied that side, price this side, this is the supply curve, this is the demand curve okay? and government is telling that no, 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 no. this is the e, e point, equilibrium point, this is the equilibrium O Q star is the equilibrium quantity and this is the equilibrium price O P star, right? Government is forcing for somehow okay, by the subsidies or something like that, some mechanism, government is telling that no transaction should be until this say Q 1 star amount. Okay? These people know the uh, sellers who are in between this and this. So, the sellers who lies in between right, they cannot tolerate at that equilibrium price whatever the equilibrium price at that price they cannot be able to deliver their product, right. But suppose uh, this is the equilibrium price, no. Suppose government is telling that you deliver until this if you can't meet up with your cost, right, the remaining thing government will give you as a subsidy. Suppose that kind of policies government is coming with. So, those sellers will be happy, okay, they will deliver the product, right, because the seller who is standing here, okay, he is getting this much of price only, OP star price only, okay, and this much he is getting from the government. So, he is happy, okay, because he needs that much he needs this much to be able to supply that product, right? So, he is happy. So, in that way suppose somehow government is making the transaction until this point beyond this equilibrium, market equilibrium okay? or free market the equilibrium which can be attained through free market mechanism. Suppose what will happen? Look at here. That case what will be the total social surplus? In any case, until Q star amount of quantity, total surplus will be this much, no doubt about that. Okay? But after that, look at here, 
this much is actually the net cost to the society. Why net cost to the society? Because the person say for this unit suppose this blue color unit, this particular unit right. What is the cost of production to the society? Of course, the person who is supplying that product or who is producing that unit, what is the cost of production to him or her? That is this much right. What is the benefit or gaining by the consumer by consuming that product? The consumer who is consuming that product, he is gaining only this much valuation, right? Because that is the demand curve here. Okay, I am I am purchasing that. Okay, because that much valuation I am generating from that product. So although say this was the price, no. So, beyond that pressure, beyond that quantity, whomever government is allowing, right, the sellers are getting the subsidy from the government to get this much of gap between the price they are getting and their cost. Say, suppose customers also getting some subsidy because price they have to pay this much, they have to pay this much price, but actual valuation of that customer is below that price. Okay? So, the remaining gap suppose this is the uh, 15 rupee okay, and my valuation is 12 rupee. Government is telling that 3 rupee I will give to you, you par, uh, purchase that from the market. So, I am taking 3 rupee from the government and then 12 rupee is my valuation. So, 12 plus 3, 15 rupee I am giving and I am purchasing from the market. In that way, government is forcing to transact market transaction to be uh, reached to the C Q1 star level instead of Q star level. Q star level is the free market through free market whatever the amount of transaction that could happen in the market. What will happen? Through this kind of subsidized mechanism right, government is actually generating this much net cost to the society. Why I am telling that net cost? Because cost of within this segment right, cost of the production of that commodities is given by this 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 line right and valuation of that product by the societal consumers is given by this demand curve right this line so valuation minus cost that is the surplus that is the welfare that society is gaining so in this segment are actually gain from the for the society is less than the cost for the society and if you add that gain minus cost right, negative of this much will come this area. So, through this kind of subsidized mechanism right, what government is forcing more amount of quantity to be transacted in the market. But as a result, what is the societal ultimate surplus or societal welfare in this economy is actually happening? This much surplus is no doubt positive surplus is generated by the society minus this much of negative surplus is generated within the society by the government mechanism. So, what we have discussed today is that if government try to intervene into this market through this side quantity side by some mechanism may be rationing to cut down consumption or cut down transaction overall or may be through some subsidized scheme incentivize the producers and or relatively inefficient producers and inefficient customers are get incentivized are incentivized by the government subsidized policy. They are able to participate in the market, but the result is that through that society is gaining this much of net loss. So, what is the societal surplus then? Societal surplus will be this larger triangular area minus this smaller triangular area. So, in any case societal surplus is going down. When I am telling in any case societal surplus is going down, in which sense I am clarifying does not matter when government, are in, government is intervening into this quantity axis does not matter whether government is putting some quantity restriction which is lower than the market equilibrium quantity or through some mechanism subsidized mechanism perhaps to some quantity transaction which is larger than the market equilibrium quantity, both the cases societal overall surplus is going to get down vis a vis 
the amount of surplus that could be generated within the society by the free market mechanism by the free market mechanism means without the government intervention or without the that economies that society's authorities intervention for whatever being the way right so in this way we can prove that through government intervention that government is actually going to cut down the societal welfare if the intervention is this side exactly the same way in the next lecture we will discuss if intervention in the this side in that way also government is going to reduce the societal welfare only so the thing is that free market mechanism is the not only the good way to allocate the resources that is the desirable way from the societal point of view that is the uh, best way from the societal point of view amount of the pie of cake if that pie of cake is denoted by the social welfare some of the producers and consumers welfare right the size of that pie of the cake size of the cake will be the maximum when market is allowed to operate freely without any intervention from the authority okay of course as we discussed sometimes back in the very beginning when we were discussing principles 10 principles that time we told two cases if there is some externality or if there is some market power this market for presence of market power or presence of externality can create market failure if market fails to deliver this kind of best solution that time government can intervene and government can improve so another principle was there that after this thing market is a good way to allocate resources immediately next principle was sometimes government can improve the market outcome that is that when some monopoly power is there one one producer is there or selected number of producers are there who have enough number of power to control the market price and all right then they can generate some sort of negative social welfare that time government can inter intervene and improve the social welfare otherwise what we have discussed so far there is no externality there is no market power also because we told the by default competitive market so this free market mechanism is basically competitive market we are discussing here so competitive market if you allow to operate freely it will be able to generate the size of the cape maximum okay and this is that is why it's a desirable outcome for the society okay let us stop here and we will continue in the next lecture if government wants to intervene this side through maybe perhaps uh, by imposition of the some tax or maybe some uh, price uh, uh, upper limit or lower limit or upper boundary or lower boundary kind of things on price through that price floor or price ceiling kind of mechanism how government still is going to actually get going to distort the market by distortion what we are referring by distortion is basically we are referring that the size of the cake will be reduced only okay that we will show in the next next lecture let us stop here